with Allah's blessings, almost 5,000 people logged in online. Uh, so online there seems to be a huge amount of people uh, logging on, mashallah, tabarakallah, which is a great blessing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and I think for, for a lot of people, they want to sit and be in the comfort of their, uh, of their favorite chair. I'd like to say a cup of, a cup of coffee in their hands, but <laughs> obviously, I mean, of course, if they're in other places of the world where there's iftar time, you know, why not? Uh, but everywhere else, uh, I guess at least if not with a cup of coffee in their hands and at least with the heart attentive uh, and very eagerly waiting to hear about the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya khwani, when Ramadan used to come, the scholars of Islam used to close their books of fiqh. They used to close their books of fiqh and they only used to keep the Quran open. And that is what Imam Ahmed used to do. Imam Ahmed as well as Imam Malik and others, they would close their books of fiqh and then they would open the books of the Quran, meaning the tafsir of the Quran, read recitation of the Quran, tadabbur, reflection on the Quran, etc. And that is because, wallahi, this is the month of the Quran and the month of coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the Quran. So, ikhwati, this is Surah Waqi'ah, which is one of the most beautiful surahs in the Quran. By the way, some people asked, how are we choosing which surahs to, to go through? Uh, well, if you have a particular surah that you feel uh, you, that you would like me to take, inshallah, do let me know. But I've chosen some of the, the, the surahs in the Quran that are the most, uh, uh, the most uh, sweetest on the tongue, the easiest to recite, uh, the, the, the ones that have the most uh, amazing, uh, heart-touching uh, stories and lessons for all of us, the ones that are most relevant, I guess, to the people around us from my experience in Dawah, from the way that I have seen human beings and how they have Muslimin and how they have uh, been. Uh, I chose those surahs that I feel would be the most appropriate for them. So this is the way I've chosen the surahs. For the first 10 days, inshallah, which is the first 10 days of Ramadan, the surahs will be more of the more of the Makki type of surahs, those that were revealed in Makkah that has a lot of lessons for the Day of Judgment to soften our, all our hearts because we've had 11 months of, ibad, of uh, lack of ibadah really, 11 months of no fasting and no real sadaqah, no real uh, you know, tahajjud at all. So we've, we've developed a bit of a hard heart. So I want to soften the hearts. I want to crack it with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in the, in the middle 10, uh, middle 10 days inshallah which is the 11th till the 12th till the 20th inshallah I want to focus on those surahs uh, that have a lot of lessons for us right uh, such as uh, lessons about manners lessons about doing more for the cause of Allah lessons like focusing our our character improving our morals and behaviors then the last 10 days inshallah ta'ala I want to focus on those surahs that sum up everything uh, and that give the best of both worlds uh, and sum up uh, some of the lessons that we have we have learned previously and also the most popular surahs that people love to recite like surah yaseen and surah rahman and others we will take in the inshallah in the last 10 days this is the logic that i'm following if anyone would like a particular surah i mean don't come to me surah baqarah at the moment because that's going to take uh, a whole ramadan to finish <laughs> but if you come to me with other surahs that you that you would love to uh, listen to the tafsir of or that you always wanted to know then please do so inshallah just message me on facebook inshallah طيب, we have with us surah waqi'ah surah waqi'ah was revealed to the prophet sallallahu in makkah and this was revealed as some of the scholars said that it was revealed early on even before the islam of umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, accepted islam we know that uh, he, he, uh, w before he accepted Islam, he once took his sword and he was seen to be walking somewhere. And so people said, where are you going, Umar? He said, I'm going to go and kill Muhammad Sallallahu uh, So people said to him, why don't you just start with your own family? Your family, we heard that has actually accepted Islam. So he got really angry. He went to his sister and found that his sister accepted Islam. And so he hit her very hard until blood started to come out from her face. So at that point, Umar saw the blood coming out down from her face and he felt sorry. So at that point, uh, he said, show me what you have been given. So at that point, uh, the, the, the sister Umar who said, uh, no, first you go and wash yourself, for indeed you are, you are najis, you are uh, in a filthy state. Yeah, because in the al-mushrikur najis, right? Because the disbelievers, idolaters, they don't clean themselves properly, many of them or they commit acts of uh, greater defilement and they don't 
uh, purify themselves. As a result, uh, he said, you are najis. So at that point, Umar heard the verse because his sister recited that verse in the Quran, لا يمسه إلا المتحرون No one can touch his Quran except the pure ones. And that verse is actually from Surah Waqiyah. So we know that the Surah was already revealed by that time, right? And this is some of the ways by which the scholars decipher when was the Surah revealed. Because there's no real indication in a Surah when was it exactly revealed. So we know this revealed uh, early before the Islam of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So the early uh, periods of the Prophet's messengership in Mecca. This Surah is amazing because it talks about the three groups of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will divide the people into on the day of judgment. There will be the sabiqur al-awwalun, then there'll be the right, right hand people, people of the right hand, and then people of the left hand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed that of the people on this earth, some of them are from the sabiqin, some of them from the ashab al yamin and the rest from ashab al-shimal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already re- decreed this and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written this down in the Loh al mahfuz And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings it out on the day, of, uh, will bring it out in reality as we lead our life today in this dunya, whether we are from the sabiqeen or from the ashab al yamin or a'udhu billah from the ashab al-shimal. In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes how uh, the disbelievers disbelieve and they do not understand the reality of the Day of Judgment. On the, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will divide people onto the three groups. As for the Sabiqeen, Allah describes the Jannah that has been given to them, which is Al-Firdaus Al-A'la and the highest of Jinan. What sort of life they will lead, what sort of food they will eat, what sort of clothes they will wear, what sort of women they will marry, what sort of spouses they will have, what sort of life they will have, and what sort of enjoyment that they will have in this dunya. Then Allah Azzawajal moves on to Ashab Al-Yameen, the people of the right hand, what sort of life they will lead and how, how the Jannah that they will have, which is the lower levels of Jannah, will resemble uh, places that have lots of fruit trees and lots of places to eat and lots of reclining couches and lots of uh, amazing uh, places to see and wander around. And they will have pure wives uh, of, the, of similar age, mature age of the age of 33, who are, uh, who are created just for the Ashab al yamin Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to description of Ashab al-Shimal. And the Ashab al-Shimal are those people of the, of the left hand. And Allah Zubta talks about the food that will eat, the clothes they will wear, the punishment and torture that they will have, how they will eat from the zakum tree and how they will eat from, the, from this tree that has acidic fruits that grows from the, from the depth of Jahannam. And how when they eat this, they will feel extremely thirsty, but they'll be burning up but still feel so thirsty that they will drink from boiling water and the boiling water will do nothing except to burn their insides. And this is the, this is the Ashabul, Ashabul Shimal. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to the, uh, to the second page or the third page of this surah where he talks about why is it that people disbelieve. It's because they do not ponder, they don't reflect. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about four things to reflect on in this surah. First thing to reflect on is how we, we, were, we were created from nothing or we were created from a despicable fluid that flows from our private parts. So is it, is it the fluid that creates itself or does something else create it? Meaning does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create human beings out of it? Then Allah talks about the examples of what we harvest and what we grow in harvest. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the water that we drink. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the fire that we kindle from the, from the trees that we have and asks us whether we ponder about these things or not. Then finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a promise by the stars and by the flowing or the, uh, or the celestial bodies and how they move around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises by them and he talks about how this Quran is indeed a pure book that is preserved in the Loh al-Mahfuz that has been sent down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, Allah ends the surah by talking about our last moment of death and when the soul has reached the throat and indeed it is about to come out and the angels are pulling the soul out of the body, then the angels will behave with the soul according to which of the three groups we are from. So Allah returns the conversation back to the first three groups from which he started talking about, which is the three groups that he created for the people of Jannah, Jahannam. So if it is from the Muqarrabeen, meaning the Sabiqeen, the ones who are the forefront, then ruhun wa raihanu wa jannat naim meaning that he will straight away enter into Jannah, all the blessings of Jannah will be open to him. 
such as ulama, such as scholars, such as mujahideen, those people who die in the path of Allah, straight away entry into Jannah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, if it is from Ashab al yameen فَسَلَامٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ Meaning, then, be, then peace be upon you, O people of the right hand. Peace be upon you, O people of the right hand. Meaning, that they will, the people of the right hand, their souls will go back uh, to Jannah, but their bodies will be in, in the grave, and they will sleep in their graves, the sleeping of someone who is newly married. Meaning, no adab al-qabr, no punishment adab, but not, not direct entry into Jannah, but they will have to wait later on, but they will be in peace in their graves. Then Allah talks about Ashab al-Shimal. If he was from the Dalin, the ones who are so misguided, then straight away entry into Jahannam, meaning the fire, or the grave will be full of fire. And a, and a window will be opened up from Jahannam. This will be their recompense on the day that they pass away until the day they resurrect in which day they are thrown into the tremendous Jahannam that has been created for them. Hey, khwani, this is Surah Waqia, very powerful Surah, beautiful Surah as well, and something, well, alhamdulillah, I'm sure if you understand the meaning of, you will truly want to be from the Sabiqeen, and you will want to strive and struggle saying, I want to be from the Sabiqeen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. in the name of Allah, the generally merciful, the specifically merciful to the believers. Ida waqa'atil waqi'ah. When the waqi'ah takes place, what does waqi'ah mean? Waqi'ah means it comes from the word waqa'ah, which is to definitely take, which is to take place. So waqi'ah meaning that which has taken place. The waqi'ah that is referred with al waqi'ah meaning the one that is inevitable, it's taking place is inevitable. So the inevitable event. Ida waqa'atil waqi'ah. When the inevitable event takes place, can you see how Allah has called the day of judgment inevitable? It will have, it's inevitable, there's no way, there's, it's impossibility for you to think otherwise. Meaning to say that the day of judgment will not take place, oh, that's impossible. It will most definitely take place, it is an inevitable event. إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ لَيْسَ لِوَقَعَتِهَا كَاذِبًا It's taking place, is not kadiba. Meaning it is not a lie. It's taking place, it's not a lie, it is most definite truth. خَافِدَةُ الرَّافِعَةِ خَافِدْ خَفَضَ is to lower. Rafa'a is to raise. So khafidatun, meaning this day of judgment will humble some of them, meaning it will lower some people. Wa rafi'a and will raise others. Who are, who are the ones who the day of judgment will khafad, will, will humble? They are the rich people, those people who have wealth. In this dunya, the day of judgment will humble them. Those people who had might and power in this dunya, Allah will humble them, He will lower them. And those people who are lowly in this dunya, those people who are humble in this dunya will be high and mighty on that day. Rafia, those people who were, uh, who this dunya is a prison for them will be high and mighty on the day. Whereas those people who this dunya was an enjoyment and luxury for them will be lowest on that day. In the authentic hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed, the Prophet ﷺ said the rich people will be the lowest on the day of judgment except for those who donate in the cause of Allah. Except for those who, give, who are charitable in the cause of Allah. Khafidatun rafi'a. Khafidatun rafi'a. Raising others and lowering others. Ida rujjatil ardu rajja. Meaning, when will it take place? When the earth will shake with the tremendous shaking. Rujja. Rujja means complete shaking, right? Completely shaking. When every single part of the, of the body shakes, that's called rujja. So the earth shaking, meaning every single thing in the earth will shake tremendously. إِذَا رُجَّتِ الْأَرْضُ رَجَّا وَبُسَّتِ الْجِبَالُ بَسَّا And the mountains have been crushed with a single crushing. فَكَانَتْ حَبَاءً مُنْبَثَّا When they are crushed, meaning they are uprooted, smashed against each other, they are crushed, they, are, they have become haba, meaning sand, mumbatha, meaning scattered sand. So they have become like dust, and when the wind blows, it is, because, it is as if that the Mountains have now scattered. This is how powerful the day of judgment will be when massive mountains. To understand the significance of this verse, brothers and sisters, go and stand in front of a mountain. Go to Cameron Heights, for example. Yeah? Or go to uh, Genting Highlands when you see the big mountains and the big rocks. Imagine when they are smashed to each other. Imagine the impact it will have with each other, subhanAllah. فَكَانَتْ So it has become like scattered dust. 
وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا And you are أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا meaning three groups of people. أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا meaning three groups of people. فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةً As for the people of the right hand, أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةً Maymana comes from the word yameen, which is right. So أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةً مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةً What will tell you who the people of the right hand are? وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةً And the people of the left hand, what will tell you who the people of the left hand are? وَأَصْحَابُ وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ سَابِقُونَ comes from the word sabaqa, meaning to be at forefront, meaning it's a competition. So they understand that this life is a competition in goodness. 70 years of goodness, competition in goodness, so that we can excel and win against each other. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ Those who excel. Brothers, you know, sisters in Islam, do you know how bad our understanding of this verse is today? That today, we don't even understand that we are meant to compete with, for Jannah. Today, we are the most careless. Have you seen when we stand in a row, for example, for Salah, and there is a gap in the front? What do we do? My brother, you take it. No, no, brother, you take it. No, brother, you take it. You know, we offer the front row to someone else, which is madness. Madness. The Sahaba would never do that. They would struggle with each other to be the one that takes it. No. Oh, but this is impolite. What are you talking about impolite? It's impolite when you're eating food, yes. When you're eating food, you offer it to your brother first. That's politeness. When it comes to ibadah, this is not impoliteness. No. This is wasabiqoon. This is sabaq. This is to be at forefront. So do not be foolish, ikhwani. Yeah? Do not be foolish. In the acts of ibadah, you must be the first to do it. The first to attain it. The first to achieve it. This is why Abu Bakr used to compete against Umar. And Umar would compete against Abu Bakr. Why? To be the first to worship Allah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew how much reward there is in the first row, you would even put lots, meaning you would put your names into a pot to find out who would be the ones who gets to go in the first row today, if you knew how much reward there is. So brothers and sisters of Islam, do not be of those people at all. Rather know that this is about competition. Competition. Allah says in the Quran, وَلِمِثْلِ ذَلِكَ After describing Jannah, Allah says, and for the example of Jannah, let the, comp let the competition begin. Let the comp competitors compete. Let the competitors compete. So I am competing with you. You are competing with me. Remember that. My Shaykh used to compete with us in trying to be the one who, who is at the first row. We used to, he used to walk faster than us to be the one in the first row. Literally. When the Iqamah would go off, we're at the back of the masjid. He would compete to be at the first row. Why? Because this is about competition. And if we don't have the spirit of competition, believe me, Ikhwani, we don't know what else will. You know, so I've gone to this uh, developers, you know, in, in Malaysia, you've got this really amazing thing. When developers launch their, their flats and it's a really interesting price, a good price, and they say, you know what, you know, uh, signing starts at 10 o'clock. Oh my God, the number of people that are competing with each other to buy, buy uh, plots. It's crazy. Have you, has anyone ever attended that? It's madness, madhouse. I said, why are people struggling so hard? This is for, you know, to give them money even. You know what I'm trying to say? Madness to buy a plot of land. Can you imagine Jannah now? Why is it that we don't compete? It's, it's probably because we don't believe enough. So we need to work on our belief about Jannah and belief in the Day of Judgment. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ They are the ones who are close to me. Meaning they are the ones who have tried to come close to me, so I have... I have also come close to them. Ula'ik al muqarrabun. They are the ones who are close to me. Fi jannat al naim in the highest of the gardens of paradise, which is the blessed jannah of of tremendous blessing. Thulla tum min al awwalin. A large number of people from the previous generation. So the scholars of Islam said three things, three meanings for this. Thulla tum min al awwalin means that a lot of people from the previous nations before the Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and only a few people from the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu But this is not authentic. This is not the strongest opinion. This is one opinion of the scholars, not strong. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu said in authentic hadith in Bukhari, would it, would you, would it make you happy if, uh, if, if uh, 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 one fourth of the people of Jannah was from you, meaning from Muslimin of the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu And the Sahaba became happy, Ya Rasulullah, that would be brilliant. Then the Prophet said, would it be happy? Would you, would you be happy 
If you are half the people of Jannah, then the Sahabi became even more happy. Then the Prophet said, no, rather I make dua to Allah that you are the vast majority of the people of Jannah. So the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu will be 66% of the people of Jannah. From the authentic hadith we know that the people of Jannah will be made into 120 rows. Of the 120 rows, the first 80 rows will be the people of, Muh- of the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. So how blessed are we brothers and sisters? Highest probability of being from the people of Jannah, MashaAllah. Highest probability. وَالسَّابِقُونَ السَّابِقُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ فِي جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ ثُلَّةٌ مِّنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ The second meaning of ثُلَّةٌ مِّنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ A scholar said is a large number of people from the previous generation of, of, of uh, which, uh, previous meaning the generations of the Sahaba and the companions, their companions and their companions and only a few وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْآخِرِينَ and only a few from our generation and this is the strongest opinion the fact that this thullatu min al-awwalin refers to the generation of the Sahaba, generation of the Prophet Sallallahu and their generation and the generation after it and the generation after it. Large number of them are from the Sabiqoon, right? Whereas the Sabiqeen from our generation in our time, 21st century, is only a few, which is true. Vast majority of the people, 1.5 billion Muslims would say, how many of them actually pray? How many, how many of them actually fast properly? How many of them actually fast Ramadan but will not pray? Isn't it true? I remember when I was young, I had no knowledge of Islam. I was born into a Muslim family, but I would fast the day, but spend the whole day watching Indian, Indian movies. One after the other, we had cassettes, you know those big fat cassettes? We'd rent three at a time. We'd say, oh, okay, uh, fasting these days is about 12 hours. Okay, about three, day, three hours, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. I might wake up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Let's put in one Indian movie. It'll take three hours to finish. The second Indian movie, it'll take three hours to finish. Next Indian movie. By the time it finishes, Alhamdulillah, we're ready for iftar. And what is that? Subhanallah. It's amazing. The misguidance of shaitan, subhanallah. Yani. Alhamdulillah, ladhi hadana lihada. Glory be to Allah who has guided us. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabb. وَقَلِيلُ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ And this is the sad story, Ikhwani, that only a few of our generation will be from the Sabiqeen. Yeah? And that is true because how many of us truly strive and struggle with our blood and sweat and tears for the sake of our Rahman. So Allah now continues and tells us what type of Jannah they will go. عَلَى سُرُرٍ مَوْضُونَ They are going to go and into this beautiful Jannah that is at the highest of Jinan. In which they are surur. Surur means, is the plural of sarir, which means beds. But over here, it, it refers to reclining couches. Ala sururin, meaning lots of beds of light. Mauduna, mauduna meaning beautifully prepared for them. So it's not a bed that is not prepared or a couch that's not prepared, but fantastically prepared with beautiful uh, cushions and heavy brocade and light emanating all of it from it. Light. Light is actually, the couch is made of light. Can you imagine? Subhanallah. Ala sururin mawduna. Muttaki'een alayha mutaqabileen. Muttaki'een, meaning they're not lying down nor sitting up. They are reclining. So they're reclining nicely like this. Reclining. Muttaki'een mutaqabileen, meaning they are facing each other. So they're on thrones of light. All of these people are facing each other. Mutaqabileen, facing each other. يَطُوفُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ وِلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ Running around them, jumping over them, around them, beneath them are wildan, meaning children. So the servants are children. Wildanu مُخَلَّدُونَ Eternally, eternally youth, youth, meaning they're not going to grow old, so they're always going to be youth. Meaning the servants of the people of the, of the Ashab al the Sabiqeen will be servants that are eternally young, that are running around with every type of Beautiful drink and, and wine to, for them to drink. Be akwabin. What are they doing? They are running around be akwab with cups, wa abariq, and with vessels, pouring vessels. Inside the vessels are wine and the most delectable delights. Be akwabin wa abariqa wa kasin and with crystal cups, mimmaeen, from all beautiful, beautiful drinks that Allah has created for us. La yusabdaun. From that drink, they're not going to get a headache. Meaning, like alcohol, when you drink in this dunya, you get a headache, right? You get a hangover and headache. You're not going to get a suda. Suda means a headache. La yusadda'oon, meaning they will not get a headache from it. Wala yunzifoon, nor will they become drunk and drowsy. 
wa fakihatin on top of this beautiful drinks that they will drink fakiha beautiful ya khwani does every, anyone really appreciate don't you appreciate the drink when you're breaking your fast yeah how how amazing is that right mashallah it might be a little bit of a sweet drink how amazing is it it's amazing wallahi imagine the drinks of jannah how much we will appreciate it on top of this wa fakihatin fruits mimma yatakhayyirun for whatever they wish whatever they love meaning the scholars of tafsir said that when they're reclining on their couches and they look at a, a, a fruit tree that has beautiful fruit, the tree will bend and come forward. You don't have to move. <laughs> okay, the tree will bend and come forward and put the fruit in front of your mouth. I mean, you have to take a bite, but I mean, that's the only thing perhaps. <laughs> but the tree will come and this is, this is what uh, the, Ibn Abbas said, that the fruit will come and present itself in front of you so you can take a bite. وَفَاكِهَةِ مِمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ And, and, uh, and uh, fruits. Mimma from whatever يَتَخَيَّرُونَ Whatever they love and whatever they wish. وَلَحْمِ And لَحْمِ meaning meat. Alhamdulillah for meat, right guys? We're all hungry now. We want some meat, biryanis, right? وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ طَيْرٍ meaning the fruit or the meat of طَيْرٍ which is fowl, meaning all different types of uh, birds like for example you might like chicken or you might like turkey or you might like pe uh, pheasants or you might like for example uh, you know some other bird that you that you like eating so uh, and the, the, the meat of birds from whatever they love so Ibn Abbas said in the tafsir of this verse he said when a believer looks at a bird and he wants to eat it the bird will become barbecued in front of him straight away. I mean, he doesn't have to go and catch it and run after it and then, wife, yalla, let's cook something. <laughs> and then, you know, we have to skin it and we have to go through all of that and wait for it to boil. Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? No, no, none of that stuff, okay? It's, it's barbecued and ready in front of you. Lahmi tayrin, mimma yashtahun, from whatever they wish. Wahoorun in, and the women with the most lovely, beautiful black eyes. Okay, Hur, Hur al Eid. Hur means uh, wide eyed women. Al Eid meaning eyes. So very wide eyed, black, beautiful, mascara all around. This is called Hur al Eid. Why are they called Hur al Eid? They're called Hur al Eid because as soon as you look at them, what will mesmerize you is their eyes before their body or anything else about them. But we know so much about them. Ibn Qayyim reports almost 30 verses in his poetry of Nuniya regarding the Hurul Ain. How beautiful they are, how they are made from saffron. They're made from saffron, not clay. So if the women of this dunya are made from clay, can you imagine women of Jannah made, being made from saffron? How you'll be able to see the nerves from their, from their bodies, how the khimar is more expensive than all of this dunya and all that it contains. How when they, when they smile or they laugh, They'll be lightning, they'll, they'll cause lightning in the sky from the amount of light they have on their bodies. SubhanAllah, and how they will sing for their husbands. Uh, and these are the Hurul Eid. I, I won't go too much into it, inshaAllah. Wa Hurul Eid. Wa ka amthali lu'il maknoon. Yani, I'm going to save Hurul Eid discussion for uh, a camping day for the brothers only, right? Guys, we, we organize a camping day for all the brothers. <laughs> this is a brothers only event, inshallah. Okay, ka'amthali lu'lu il maknoon. Like the example of lu'lu, which is uh, uh, pearls, maknoon meaning preserved pearls. So imagine pearls that are hidden within beautiful silk garments. So they're concealed beautiful pearls. Why are they called concealed pearls? Whereas uh, for the servants, they're called lu'lu amanthura. Right? Lu'la manthura meaning scattered pearls because the servants are running around. So it's like pearls are scattered. You take a pearl necklace and you scatter it and they're jumping on top of each other. This is called scattered pearls. So the servants look like scattered pearls. Right? But the hurul in are called lu'lu'a maknuna, meaning concealed pearls, meaning that they are not for service. They're only for enjoyment. They're for companionship. They're not there for to serve you food or anything. No, they will do that but out of pleasure, not out of... They're not created for service. They're created for pleasure. Okay? كَأَمْثَالِ لُؤْلُؤِ الْمَكْنُونَ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ As a reward for what they used to do. لَا يَسْمَعُونَ فِيهَا لَغْوًا وَلَا تَأْثِيمًا They will not hear therein any لَغْو meaning any vain speech, wasted speech. وَلَا تَأْثِيمًا Nor any sinful words. 
swearing words, harmful words, okay? Or any sounds like, you know, like this sound that we make, right? Oof, those sort of sounds. They will not hear any sort of ta'thima, illa qilan salaman salama, except for the, the saying, peace be on you, peace be on you, enjoyment upon enjoyment. Wa ashabul yamini ma ashabul yamin. And the people of the right hand, what will tell you about the people of the right hand? Fi sidrim makhdud. Guys, can you see how important it is to be from the right and not the left? Yeah? Right and left and sabiqeen. Now Allah is going to describe the right hand. This is why we do everything with the right hand. This is why we eat with the right. We wear our shoes with the right. We start with the right. We do every good thing with the right. And we do everything that is negative or false or bad with the left. Tayyip, let's move on. Washabul Yamini Mashabul Yameen. And the people of the right hand, what will tell you about the people of the right hand? Fi Sidrim Mahdud. They'll be in gardens with Sidr. Sidr means cedar trees. Cedar trees are those very huge low trees. Massive, massive branches with massive, uh, massive uh, leaves. So Fi Sidrim Mahdud, meaning widespread slow trees. Wa Talhim Mamdud. Talh means fruits. Mandud meaning layered on top of each other. Okay, so imagine like banana trees with the with the trees with the uh, with the uh, Have you seen the bananas how they come with the fruits all laid on top of each other? Yeah, in the same way Talhim Mandud refers to banana trees that are laid with fruits on top of each other Yeah, Talhim Mandud, but doesn't just refer to banana trees it refers to all other types of trees as well, but in specifically the reference here is to banana trees. And dhil means shade. Mamdud meaning widespread shade. Shade from what? Shade from the light of the throne of Allah, not light from the sun. Because La Yarona Fiha Shamsa Wala Zamharira, as Allah says in Surah Insan. They will not see any sun nor any extreme cold, right? So there will be no sun there, but the light in Jannah will be from the throne of Ar Rahman. Right? Okay. Fi dhillim mamdud in widespread shade. Wa ma in maskub and water that is poured forth plentifully. Beautiful pure water that is plentifully flowing, springs that are flowing everywhere for them to drink from. Wa ma in maskub. Wa fakihatin kathira and fruits that are abundant. Lots of fruits everywhere. La maktuatin. Wala mamnu'a. La maktu meaning it does not ever finish. Wala mamnu'a meaning that it's not seasonal. It will not end with a season. Yeah? Guys, is there a type of fruit that you like to eat that ends with the season? Like I like strawberries, for example. Mushkila strawberries only grow in certain times. I also like cherries. Problem with the cherries is that, you know, it also grows in different seasons. Also like, anyway, I like too many things, isn't it? I think we're, we're probably uh, hungry. But anyway, but the point is that, can you see when you like a fruit, Unfortunately, the season finishes, isn't that right? But this season, it will never ever finish, mashallah. La maktu'atin wa la mamnu'a. It will never ever finish. After you eat it, it will pop out again. Nor will it be ever seasonal, meaning that it will, it will start or finish at one time. Wa furushim marfu'a. And furush, meaning over here, the scholar said furush can mean two things. It can either mean beds for them to recline and to rest on. Not for sleeping, by the way, because there's no sleep in Jannah. We will never sleep in Jannah. No more sleep. Jannah is not for sleep. The reason why scholars said there's no sleep in Jannah is because it will be a waste of time to sleep. <laughs> we want to enjoy. Okay? So no sleep, Ikhwani. No sleep in Jannah. You'll never get tired. Okay? You will just want to do new things, but not that you'll ever get tired of doing something at all. Physically tired, like we get tired now, we want sleep. No sleep at all. Marfu'a meaning reclining beds that are marfu'a that are raised up high. That are raised up high. Furushim marfu'a. Some of the scholars said Furushim marfu'a refers to the wives of Jannah. They are like the like your beds, meaning that you lie on them. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Wafurushim marfu'a inna ansha'na hunna insha'adu. Because the next verse refers to the women who are the spouses of the Ashabul Yameen. Inna ansha'na hunna, verily we have created them, insha'a, with a beautiful insha, with a new creation. Who is Allah talking about? The wives of the people of Jannah, the spouses of the people of Jannah. Faja'alna hunna abkara. 
So we made them, meaning the wives of the people of Ashab al Yameen, we made them abkara. What does abkar mean? We made them into virgins. And that's why the, the hadith, which is in, uh, in Bukhari and others, state that when a man sleeps with his wife in Jannah, his wife will return back to him virgin again. So she will return her virginity every single time, right? So this is what it means by Fajalna Hunna Abkara, meaning perpetually virgins. We have made them perpetually virgins. Uruban Atraba. Urub means mature, full breasted mature women. Meaning, as the scholars mention in the tafsir of this verse, the women will be at the age of 33 years old. Okay? At the age of 33, when they have attained their full maturity, physically and others. I know some of the brothers are looking like, no, I want younger. No, no. Listen, you'll be fine. Okay? Accept it. Uruban, which is <laughs> mature women. Atraba means equal age. Right? Mature aged women of equal age. So the, the, so the people who will enter Jannah will be at the age of 33 and the wives will be also mature aged at the age of 33. For the people of the right hand. A large number of people from the previous generations, meaning the previous generation of the early generations of the Sahaba. And a large number of the people of the latter generations as well. Okay? Latter gen generation, which is from our generation, inshallah. And latter than that will be a large number of people, be in the life of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Wa ashabu shimal. Now Allah Azawajal turns to the people of the left hand. Wa ashabu shimal ma ashabu shimal. And the people of the left hand, what will tell you about the people of the left hand? Fi samumi wa hamim. Fi samum wa hamim. What does samum and hamim mean? Samum meaning in boiling water and boiling fire. From boiling water and tremendously hot fire. How hot is the fire? The fire, as the authentic hadith in Bukhari state, that it was burning for 70 years. Fire of Jahannam was, kit, was lit. And when you, when you mean lit, meaning that, that the angels are blowing into it, plus throwing fuel into it for 70 years until the fire became red. Then another 70 years until it became white and then another 70 years until the fire became black. Okay, so it is, it is thousands of times uh, uh, hotter. Of course, the hadith states 70 times hotter than this, than this, uh, than this earth. Uh, but Wallahu ta'ala alam, the hottest thing that we know of perhaps is the center of the sun, which is millions of degrees. So only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how hot uh, this really is. Only Allah knows. Fi samum yu hamim. In samum and hamim. So boiling water and boiling, boiling fire. Wa dhalilim mi yahmum. And smokes. So columns of smoke that comes out from the fire. La baridi wa la kareem. No coolness will they ever have. Wa la kareem. Nor any gentleness or softness at all. It will be all hard, hard, hard work. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَٰلِكَ مُتْرَفِينَ Verily before this Jahannam, they were upon tremendous luxury. كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَٰلِكَ Meaning before the Jahannam, mutrafin. Mutrafin meaning they were in taraf. Taraf means luxury. So they were in tremendous luxury. وَكَانُوا يُسِرُّونَ عَلَى الْحِنْثِ الْعَظِيمِ And they used to, يُسِرُّونَ Meaning they used to hurry to do الْحِنْثِ الْعَظِيمِ الْحِنْثِ meaning a tremendous sin, الْعَظِيمِ the great sins. So they used to do to, to hurry to do great sins. What's an example of great sins, Ikhwani? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned some of the great sins that people do. Yeah? And I can tell you some of the sins we fall into very quickly. Disobeying parents, for example, very quickly. Or for example, delaying on salah. Or for example, today dealing in riba. Or for example, ghiba. Yeah? How many sins do we hurry to fall into? So, Ikhwani, we really have to, really have to watch ourselves. وَكَانُوا يُسِرُّونَ عَلَى الْحِنْثِ الْعَظِيمِ And they used to hurry up to do hinth, which is sinful, al-azim, the great sins. So be very wary that we do not become from those people who hurry to do great sins. وَكَانُوا يَقُولُونَ And they used to say, أَإِذَا مِتْنَا If we were to die, وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا And we become dust and soil and sand. وَعِظَامًا And we become bones. Are we going to be brought back to this life again? Meaning they used to deny the day of judgment. And Ikhwani, remember we spoke about yesterday, some people deny with their tongues, other people deny with their actions. 
How do you deny with your actions? Like you sin carelessly and you don't even care that Allah will take you to account. So when you sin carelessly without worrying about the day of judgment, this is the person who is sinning and not caring. And this is the person who is also disbelieving in the day of judgment by his action. They used to say, if we were to die, we become sand and, and bones, are we going to then be resurrected? Even the people, our forefathers from the past, meaning our fathers from the early generations, so they were amazed. Say to them, meaning in definiteness, in, 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 in surety, absolute, in absoluteness, tell them, O Muhammad Sallallahu قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ Verily the first and the last one. لَمَجْمُعُونَ إِلَى مِيقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ لَمَجْمُعُونَ La meaning of a surety. La ta'akid. Most definitely. مَجْمُعُونَ will be gathered together. إِلَى to مِيقَاتٍ To an appointed time. معلوم. Well known appointed time. ثُمَّ Thereafter. إِنَّكُمْ O you all. أَيُّهَا الضَّالُّونَ Those who are. Dalun, who those who have become astray and far away, al mukaddibun the liars. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala calls them mukaddibun, where they're actually kafirun. So in the Quran, mukaddib or kadib, lying is synonymous with kufr. Synonymous with kufr. Wailu yawma idlil mukaddibin. Wailu yawma idlil mukaddibin. Woe to the liars! Woe to the liars! Woe on that day to the liars. Who is Allah referring to? To the kafirin, those who disbelieve in His signs. So therefore. ثُمَّ إِنَّكُمْ أَيُّهَا الضَّالُّونَ الْكَافِرُونَ Instead of kafir, Allah says مُكَذِّبُونَ Then thereafter on that day, O oh, you who are uh, astray, the, 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 the مُكَذِّبُونَ Those who are liars, meaning you hide the truth. لَآكِلُونَ مِن شَجَرٍ مِن زَقُّومٍ You will most definitely eat from the tree of زَقُّوم. What is the زَقُّوم tree? Allah says in Surah Safat, زَقُّوم tree is a tree that grows from the أصل الجحيم, from the bottom of hell. So the hottest part of hell comes a tree of fire. From it grows the fruits. This tree is called zakum. Its, its uh, fruit, inshallah when we take Surah Safat, we'll come to it. Its fruit resembles the heads of shaitan. It is as if the heads of shayateen cut off and given to you. And when you eat from it, it is acidic. It will destroy your insides. So as the, the, the scholars mentioned, as people are eating from it, their mouth disintegrates because of the, um, uh, the acidity of it. And, but they will eat it in hunger, and then because of the burning of the acid, they'll want to drink water, but they will only have boiling water to drink. You will most definitely eat from the tree of zakum. That will fill up your stomachs and tear up your stomachs. Then you will struggle to drink on top of this, Sharibuna alihi, you will you struggle to drink boiling water, min al hamim from the boiling water, fa sharibuna, so you will drink shurbal him, you will drink like the drinking of thirsty camels. Have you seen thirsty camels after a long desert trip of twenty days, thirty days? How they drink? They drink like they haven't had water before. And I've seen camels drink. I'm telling you, you put a bucket in front of them, bam, it's gone. Okay, I'm telling you, they put their mouth in it, they sucked it up. You put another bucket, they sucked it, sucked it up. They drink like, oh my God. So they're not like the drinking of the cows, like putting the tongue out, or the drinking of the cats, putting tongue out. No, 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 they suck. So, sharibuna shurbal him. What is him? Him is thirsty camels. So you will drink the drinking of thirsty camels. Ya salam. Can you see how Allah is giving you a graphic picture? How masterful is this Quran in creating graphic pictures in our head? This is why we, no one could ever copy the Qur'an. How masterful is our Rahman with his words in creating amazingly graphic pictures in our head with examples that we can relate to, like a thirsty camel, like for example, a shaitan's head, like for example, you know, a couches. Though nothing is similar from this dunya to that, right? Nothing can be the equal because that is amazing. But subhanAllah, look at how masterful this Qur'an is, wallahi. You, I am lost in the mastery of this Arabic, it is so amazing. فَشَارِبُونَ شُرْبَ الْهِيمِ هَذَا نُزُلُهُمْ يَوْمَ الدِّينِ This is your nuzul, meaning your dwelling on the day of deen, of the day of, of accounting, the day of 
resurrection, the day of accounting. Nahnu khalaqnakum. We are the ones who have created you. Falaula tu sadiqun. Then why is it that you do not believe? Now Allah Zawajal moves on to telling us those four things that I said at the beginning of the, of the surah. Four things for us to ponder on. Why do we not ponder on these four things? If we just pondered on these four things, we would find enough example for us to believe. What are those four things? First, Allah will talk about semen and how Allah created mankind from semen. Then Allah will talk about harvests and crops. Then Allah will talk about water. Then Allah will talk about fire. So look at the four things Allah talks about. ma tum noon. Afaraitum, meaning have you seen ma tum noon, that which comes out of your private parts, which you expel from your body and you consider it filthy and you wash off your body, ma tum noon. Aantum takhluqunahu, are you the one who creates from this the khalq, the creation? Are you the one who gives life to this semen into this human being? Am nahnul khaliqun, or are we the one who creates human beings from this semen? نَحْنُ قَدَّرْنَا بَيْنَكُمُ الْمَوْتَ We are the ones who have spread and decreed death, mawta. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ And we are not going to be preceded in this. Meaning we have decreed death and no one can decree death before us. Meaning we are the ones who give life and death. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ No one can precede us or beat us in this. عَلَىٰ أَن نُبَدِّلَ أَمْثَالَكُمْ that we are most definitely able to change your creation. وَنُنْشِئَكُمْ And create you فِي مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Into a creation that you are not aware of. What is Allah saying here? Allah is saying that we are able to... Can you see this human being Allah created from semen? Are you the one who gives it life or are we the, the one giver of life? And when death comes, are you the one who, who causes it to die or are we the one who has total control of death? And if we wanted, can we not deform this human being into another creation? And if we want it, can we not change you into monkeys and swine and other things that Allah made other human beings into? Absolutely. This is what Allah is talking about. That if Allah wanted, Allah could change your creation into a totally different creation. And we will create you into something that you never ever knew. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ النَّشْأَةَ الْأُولَىٰ وَلَقَدْ And most definitely you have. Alimtum, you are most aware, and nash'at al the first creation, meaning you can see your creation the first time that you are created. Uh, so why don't you ponder on the second creation, which is the resurrection, that Allah will recreate everything after we have passed away. Afaraitum ma tahruthun, do you not see what you harvest? Meaning when you harvest, can you not ponder on the harvesting that you're doing? Ma tahruthun, antum tazra'unahu, are you the one? who plants the trees. Zara'a is to plant. So antum, are you the ones tazra'unahu? Are you the ones who planted and caused the tree to come out of the earth? Am nahnu zari'un or are we the ones who plant? Ikhwani, I'm telling you as a medical doctor, when patients come to me and I'm a, I'm a trauma doctor, when people come to my emergency department and then you know limbs have been cut off and their chest is smashed, and the face is smashed. I remember one guy, subhanAllah, you know, he was a meat grinder. You know, he grinds meat, he cuts meat, he puts his, you know, the big meat, pieces of meat to this big thing. As he was fixing this thing, the whole blade came off and cut all of his face. His face was literally falling off like this. Oh my God, I had, I mean, I, I have not seen as many scary things as I, said, I saw on that day when his face was falling off, his tongue was showing his, Ya Salam. Ala kulli hal. What do doctors do? They just sew it together. That's all we can do. We just sew it together, but who fixes it? It's Allah. The farmers, all they can do is just to plant it, but who cures, who brings it out? It's Allah. The doctors can just give you a bit of medicine, but who can actually kill the bug and fix it? It's Allah. This is why, ikhwani wallahi, antum tazra'unahu am nahnu zari'un. Are you the one who causes it to come out of the earth, or are we the one who causes it to come out of the earth? Law nasha, if we want it, la ja'alnahu, we would have made it, meaning this, this tree, hutaman, meaning completely yabis, meaning dry and yellow, and hutam, which is, which is ashes. Have you seen, uh, for example, trees that come out and then suddenly the heat, hot sun comes and they don't get enough water and they become shriveled and dry and fall to the ground and die? Yes, have you seen that? That's hutaman. 
لو نشا لجعلنا حطاما فظلتم تفكهون then you would have you would have put your hands in your head and said oh my god what would, what has happened انا لمغرمون if you were the farmers and you saw this would have happened you would have said oh we are destroyed بل نحن محرومون rather we are the ones who are prevented from a full harvest so allah azza wa jalla is quoting the farmers when they see that their harvest destroyed what do they do oh no we are destroyed our harvest is gone it's completely destroyed this fire has destroyed my harvest though the drought has destroyed my crops this is what allah azza wa jalla is quoting and and saying bal nahnu mahrumun rather we are the ones who have been uh, stopped this is allah quotes the farmers whose crops are destroyed this is what they would normally say afara'aytumul ma alladhi tashrabun have you seen the water that you drink antum anzaltumuhu min almuzni are you the ones who have brought it down from the muzn muzn meaning from the heavens am nahnu almunzilun or are we the ones who have sent the water down from the from the skies ikhwani today the meteorologists and and and, uh, and and the scholars who study this they cannot say with 100% certainty even till today where it will exactly rain that's why they talk about probability of raining they also today there is a high probability of rains low probability of rains right they cannot say most definitely with 100% certainty because allah says it is allah the one who decrees it like a antum anzaltumuhu min almuzni am nahnu almunzilun or are we the ones who sends it down law nasha if we wanted ja'alnahu ujaja we would have made this water sour or salty or unpalatable ujaj means sour or completely unpalatable means ah i can't drink the water if we wanted we would have made the water unpalatable falawla tashkurun so why is it that you don't give me shukr why don't you thank me for the blessings i've given you meaning you don't have to go out for this water i send it down to you fresh water for you from which you grow your crops and from which you feed your yourselves and from which you sustain yourselves why don't you thank me shukr is ziyada upon hamd so shukr is extra upon praise to say alhamdulillah is praise but shukr means praise plus doing something good for allah like for example memorizing the quran or praying tahajjud or fasting or giving sadaqa this is to do shukr you must praise allah plus do a good deed that is what shukr is so why don't you thank me afara'aytum an-nar allati turun have you seen the fire that you kindle that you start up antum are you the ones anshatum have you the one are you the ones who have caused it to start shajarataha from its are you the ones who have caused its trees that give the fire to grow am nahnu al-munshi'un or are we the ones who caused the trees that give fire to grow nahnu ja'alnahu tadhkiratan we are the ones who have made the trees as a reminder wa mata'an lil muqwin ana mata' meaning a provision for those who are god fearing so for those who are travelers and god fearing what is allah talking about tadhkira what is a tadhkira tadhkira is as the scholars mention why are the trees a tadhkira because the trees are full of water and they are bred from water they're made from water right but the same trees we can get fire from whereas from water you can never get fire so this is a tadhkira see how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can create from water something that was dry enough that will give you fire right and this is the this is the example allah is giving that from the plains of resurrection which is clay allah can create a human being that doesn't look like clay living creature right nahnu ja'alnaha tadhkiratan wa mata'an lil muqwin fa sabbih bismi rabbikal azim so glorify the name of your lord the great one allah the great fala now allah azza wa jalla moves on to the last part of this surah and talks about the qasam the swear allah will take about how this quran is so valuable so what does allah say fala so na nay rather uqsimu bi mawaqi' an-nujum i swear by the, uh, the by the movement of the celestial bodies bi mawaqi' bi mawaqi' an-nujum mawaqi' meaning the constellations you know and the trajectories that they move on the planets and the trajectories on which they move i swear by the trajectories that they move on and of course i mean that's an amazing I any mean, we know how big the universe is or we think we know at least we think we know can you imagine subhanallah allah swearing by all of the planets and by them moving and that's why allah allah azza wa jalla says wa innahu and this 
promise. La qasamul is a swear. Law ta'lamuna azim. If you only knew how great this swear is. Meaning, if you only knew how great a swear I have just taken. Right? If you only knew how great a swear I've taken. Wa innahu la qasamun law ta'lamuna azim. Innahu la quranun kareem. Verily, this is nothing but a noble Quran. Kareem, noble Quran, noble in every way. Noble in its message, noble in its recitation, noble in its meanings, noble in its, uh, in its uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, uh, cure that it has. It's noble in every single way. Whoever recites it becomes noble. Whoever does not recite it does not lose their nobility. Innahu la Quranun kareem. Fi kitabim maknoon. In a kitab, a, a, a book that is maknoon, that is preserved. So what is Allah referring to? This Quran is within another book that is preserved. In which book is the Quran already in? It is in the book called Lawh al-Mahfud. So Allah here is referring to Lawh al-Mahfud by Kitab al-Maknoon. Fi kitab al-Maknoon, la yamassuhu illa al-Mutahharun. No one can touch the Lawh al-Mahfud except for the Mutahharun, those who are pure. Who are the pure ones? The angels, right? So, the, so who is being referred to here are the angels. The scholars of Islam use this verse to say that therefore the Qur'an that is in Lawh al-Mahfud should not be touched except in a state of wudu. However, some of the ulama such as Ibn Hazm and others are of the opinion that this verse refers only to angels and refers to the Lawh al-Mahfud cannot be touched by angels. As for the Qur'an, then according to Ibn Hazm, he allowed it to be touched uh, without wudu. My advice, my advice is if you can, try to not touch the Qur'an with wudu. If on the other hand, you're someone who recites the Quran all the time, like you're memorizing, right? Then many of the ulama of the Shafi Madhab and others have given the excuse to actually touch the Quran without wudu on the, on the basis of the rura, on the basis that it is too difficult to keep your wudu all the time. And you are a student of the Quran that is constantly reciting the Quran. However, at all, at all other times, try to have wudu when you're reciting Quran. Secondly, if you cannot have wudu, then now you have these instruments and iPads and phones, etc. that you can have the Qur'an on. But I still advise anyone memorizing Qur'an to use a proper mushaf because you need to write in it. At least put a mark or a sign for you to remember some of the things in the Qur'an. Otherwise you will forget. Yeah, otherwise you'll forget when you recite the Qur'an. So my sincere advice is to, is to uh, follow this verse in its application to the Qur'an as much as possible. Unless it's difficulty, too much difficulty, then you don't have to have wudu to touch the Qur'an. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Tanzeelun min rabbil alameen. It is a book that is sent down. Tanzeel is a book that is sent down. Meaning, if it's sent down, that means Allah must be up in the heavens. So Allah Zawajal, this is why Rasulullah Sallallahu in the last hajj, he said, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad. In Arafat, he said this three times. O oh Allah, and he pointed his, his, his finger to the sky and said, O oh Allah, witness, O oh Allah, witness, O oh Allah, witness. In front of a hundred thousand Sahaba, he did this. It shows that therefore Allah is in the heavens and he sent down the Quran to us. Tanzeelun min Rabbil Alameen, from the Lord of mankind, Lord of Alameen, meaning all of creation. Afa bihad al hadithi antum mudihinun. Is it with this hadith, with this Quran? Hadith means speech. So with this speech, it, are you with this speech, mudhinun, meaning are you confused and are you doubtful? وَتَجَعَلُونَ رِزْقَكُمْ أَنَّكُمْ تُكَذِّبُونَ And you are expecting your provision to come to you, even though you continue to lie about this Qur'an. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the moment of death. Remember we said that towards the end of this surah, Allah will talk about the moment of death. Look at how powerful this verse is. فَلَوْلَا إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ So no, rather nay, when the soul has come out of the body and reached the throat. بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُومِ Ikhwani, subhanallah, if you go to the palliative ward, palliative ward is in the, in the hospital, the ward in which people are dying of cancer and terminal disease. If you go to the palliative ward, you will hear the souls reaching the throat. Because you will hear the sounds. And I can tell you, as a doctor, I've heard this so many times. Falawla ida balagatil hulkuf. When the soul has reached the throat, you know it is in the throat now. 
وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ And at that point you are looking at the soul that is about to leave. Yeah? You are looking at the soul about to leave. Or some of the scholars said it refers to the person dying as his eyesight is still there but it's going away. But he's still able to see as his soul is able to is reaching the throat now about to come out of the mouth. وَأَنْتُمْ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَنْظُرُونَ And you are looking at this soul dying. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ And we are closer to it. مِنْكُمْ than you. وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبُصِرُونَ Who's نَحْنُ here? The scholars of Islam of Tafsir said نَحْنُ here refers to the angels. And our angels are closer to it than you, meaning than you or family members of the deceased or, or doctors who are trying to save this, this human being. We are closer to it than you, but وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبُصِرُونَ But you cannot see my angels. Yeah, and so the authentic hadith state that the angel of death comes and he comes to the head and then he calls the soul out. If it is a, a soul of a believer, then the soul of a believer comes out just like a honey comes out from a honey udder. Nice flowing honey, soft and gentle. But if it is a soul of a shaitan, a soul of an enemy of Allah, someone who, was, who did not have hidayah and guidance, then the angel will tear the soul out. As he's tearing the soul, he tears his veins and tears his arteries, tears his muscles, everything as the soul is struggling to stay in the body, but he is tearing the soul out of the body. Right? And this is the description the scholars have given. فَلَوْلَا إِن كُنْتُمْ غَيْرَ مَدِينِينَ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُبُصِرُونَ But you cannot see my angels. فَلَوْلَا So if it is indeed true, in kuntum, that you are not غير مديني, that you are not obliged to follow my religion, that you are not obliged to follow what I have told you in this Quran, that you are not obliged to follow this Quran and this hidayah. فرجعونها إن كنتم ترجعونها إن كنتم صادقين. Return the soul back into the body if you can. Right? Return the soul into the body if you can. Man, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I remember a patient of mine who came into the emergency department. She had a chest pain that day. And then suddenly before she knew it, she was on the recess, bed, recess table, meaning in the most uh, critical part of the emergency department where four or five doctors all operate together to save somebody. It's called the recess bay. In the recess bay, and I remember the patient saying, I feel I'm gonna die today. And everything we tried, we did everything possible, two or three doctors working on this patient, but little by little, her body gave away, her heart gave away, liver gave away, kidney gave away. One after the other started failing, and the lady died despite struggling with her for four hours trying to save this girl. Ikhwani, wallahi, and it was a young, young person as well, 30 years old. You know, when, you, when it's time to die, man, you, no one can save you. No one can save you. So this verse, wallahi, really rings hard in mind. I know how true and how, how promise, how, the, how strong this promise is. Tarji'unaha in kuntum sadiqeen. Return the soul back. No, Ya Rabb, there's no way. There's no way to return it back when your time has come. Fa'amma in kana min al Now Allah says, so now if this soul was from the muqarrabin, those who were close to me, those who prayed a lot, those who fasted, those who struggled with their life and blood and sweat and tears for my cause, فَإِمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ if, if he indeed is from the muqarrabin, those who are close to me. فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نعيم. Then ruh wa rayhan, meaning what a beautiful life, what a beautiful dwelling, what a beautiful dress, what a beautiful food will he have. فَرَوْحٌ وَرَيْحَانٌ وَجَنَّةُ نعيم. And the blessed Jannah which is waiting for him. So he ent enters into Jannah directly. As, as the hadith mentions, when, a, when um, a, a person who dies in the path of Allah, in, in fighting in the path of Allah, that person dies as soon as the sword strikes his neck. The uh, only pain he feels is a pinch, and then he goes directly into Jannah. Yeah, he goes directly into Jannah. For rawhun wa rayhanun wa jannatu na'im, meaning the angels take his soul directly and straight away into Jannah. Wa amma in kana min ashab al yameen. And if he was from the people of the right hand, فَسَلَامٌ لَكَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ So the angels, as they're being taken up, as his soul has been taken up to Allah, and then returned back to the heaven, to the grave, 
to be questioned. Salamun laka, salam, salam, meaning peace on you, O people, peace on you, peace. Meaning the angels from the heavens to the earth will say salam to this soul as it is going up and coming down. Salamun laka min ashabi lameen, peace to you, O people of the right hand. As for if he is from the mukaddibin, the liars, the dalin, those who are misguided, totally misguided. Then straight away a dwelling of hamim, which is fire. He'll be put into the fire straight away. What is Allah talking about? He's talking about adab al qabr. Straight away. Your grave is Adab al Qabr straight away. Wa to Jahim, and he'll be taken on a path to Jahannam. Meaning, on the day of judgment, he'll be taken on a path to Jahannam. In Hada Lahu al Haqqul Yaqeen. Verily, this Quran is Al Haqq, is the truth, Al Yaqeen, absolute truth, more certain than your eyesight. Because above Ainul Yaqeen is Haqqul Yaqeen. Ayn al yaqeen meaning when you see something you definitely believe it, right? But haqqul yaqeen is even more certain and more true than the eyesight, what you can see definitely. Inna hadha verily this Quran is the haqqul yaqeen, meaning this will most definitely come true. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is not a joke, this is the truth of Allah Azza wa Jal. Fasabbih bismi rabbika al -azim. So glorify the name of your Lord the Most High, the Great. Allahu Akbar. Can you see how amazing this surah is? Powerful, isn't it, Ikhwani? Very, very powerful. Recite this surah in your, in your tahajjud salah. Recite it in your prayers. Memorize this surah. Recite it again and again. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you of those people who understand its value and come close to Allah through it. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Until tomorrow at 6 p.m. again, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.